So I guess this just ain't going to end. He, he just still ain't going to take a hint. He ain't going to take rebuke. So um going to continue to just mock the word of God. So we have to continue doing this. Using scripture doesn't matter. We have to just take his word for it. We have to just bow down and worship this guy. I mean, this is, are, are you out of your mind? You look to say, oopsie, means you're obviously taking, you're making light of this. King David did an oopsie and how we must forgive. Must being in all caps. Let's look at the definition for must. Okay. Used as, um, used to form adjectives and nouns denoting things that are essential or highly recommended. He is it is essential and highly recommended that you forgive this pervert. Let's look at 1828 Webster's Dictionary. Again, the first American dictionary of the English language as close to the 1611, as close to 1611 as we can get. Must is classically defined as to be obliged, to be necessitated, expresses both physical and moral necessity. A man must eat for nourishment, and he must sleep for refreshment. We must submit to the laws or be exposed to punishment. A bill in a legislative body must have three readings before it can pass to be enacted. It expresses moral fitness or propriety as necessity or essential to the character or in propose, deacons must be grave. A bishop must have a good report to them that are without. See, the word must goes both ways, as in we must follow the word of God. We must keep ourselves from sin. Notice that quoted 1 Timothy 3.2. This is the must, according to the Apostle Paul, is inspired by the Holy Spirit, laws that govern a minister. I see... I say minister because the vlogger, formerly known as the Vigilant Christian, as he removed Christian from his name, very telling, said in August 23rd, well now, go away, 2012, hey everyone, the ministry has exploded and I'm going to go full time. I want to give it all I got for Jesus. I want to submit to him so that he can work, do a work in my life that affects others for his kingdoms. Need all the help that I can get with this. I, I need all the help with this I can get from my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Mario's own words from six and a half years ago. Six and a half years, this man has officially declared himself to having a ministry. Not long after, let's see it when this was captured. Uh, come on now. Let's go to our properties. This was captured in on December 10th, 2017. A little over a year ago. Year and six weeks. Mario declared the, not the Vigilant Christian to be a non-profit organization. And notice how it says the Vigilant Christian is an evangelist 
of the gospel of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. I expose evil. And it's not letting me zoom in, but you can see right there um, the term that led to his ministry being a fraud as he does not use donations to give to those in need, does not spread the gospel. He wants everyone to listen to what he has to say and the books and the channels and the false teachers like John MacArthur, who we will get into in a little bit, as references. He rarely references the Bible, but we do. So therefore, since Mario calls himself an evangelist with a ministry, we look at the terms of what the Holy Word of God tells us. This is a true saying. If a man desire the, offer of a the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, wrong. The husband of one, uh, disqualified. The husband of one wife, Mario is disqualified. Vigilant, in name only. Sober, his own words, he's a drug addict and a drunk. Of good behavior. When people are coming to you, seeking edification in Jesus' name, and you're sending pictures of yourself nude, and of your male friends nude, then you're disqualified. Given to hospitality. Let's look at what hospitality um, tality is defined officially. The act of or practice of receiving and entertaining strangers or guests without reward or, or with kind and generous liability. A bishop must be given to hospitality. Since you are entertaining strangers with new pictures of yourself, you are disqualified. Apt to teach, absolutely disqualified. Not given to wine, again, disqualified. No striker. Let's look at what striker means. One that strikes or one that strikes. In scripture, a quarrelsome man. Again, let's look at what quarrelsome means so we fully understand where we're coming from here. After quarrel, given to brawls or contentions, inclined to petty fighting, easily irritated or provoked to contest. <laughs> Again, disqualified. No greedy, filthy lucre. Let's look at what lucre means. Because we're going through, we're going to, to, to break this down. Gain and money are goods, profit, usually in an ill sense or with some sense of something base or unworthy. Again, disqualified. But patient, disqualified. Not a brawler, disqualified. Nor covetous, disqualified. One that ruleth well his own house, disqualified. Having his children, disqualified, in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how should he take care of the church of God? Still leaning on your mommy to clean your house? Disqualified. Not a novice. Disqualified. Lest being lifted up with pride, disqualified, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Prove it. Right before our very eyes. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. Disqualified. Lest he fall into a reproach or snare of a devil. So right off the bat... We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, sixteen, we'll say, seventeen's right here. Seventeen things in the first seven passages. He is 0 for 17. He is officially disqualified. I do not have to forgive you for your sins. If you are not truly repenting, I am not forgiven. What you have done is unforgivable. What does that say? Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is unforgivable? What you have done is unforgivable. I mean, this is blasphemy. The oopsie 
Are you out of your mind? You don't understand the context. Okay? David paid for his sin. He, his son died. Always going in to war. <clears throat> he paid for it. And you saying we must forgive you? You must stop your blasphemy and you must step down from YouTube. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued. Again, disqualified, disqualified. Not given to much wine, disqualified. Not greedy, fil filthy lucre, disqualified. Holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience, disqualified. And let those also first be proved. Okay? When you look at this, and what it says, it must be proved, which means it must be tried, events, and experience. Okay? All of this, you have to prove yourself worthy to be the evangelist that you are. You can't just say it in name only and expect it to be true. In the eye, you can fool people on YouTube, but you cannot fool God. Even so, must their wives, which you don't have a wife, you're giving into sin, and your bisexual boyfriend does not count as a wife. Not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children in their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the in the world, received up in glory. Now, you, rather than going in to read your Bible and study to be quiet, you would much rather quote a demon in Dr. John MacArthur. Okay, and he's got a link to the full circle. Again, he's disabled his comments. He wants you to buy his merchandise, and he does not want you to rebuke him. Okay, now, doing my own research into Dr. John MacArthur, I found this from JesusIsSavior.com, and I'll leave a link to this. And I'm not going to be, I don't, think it will come out right if I show the whole thing, but uh, we're just going to read a little bit of stuff. We're just going to read just a little bit, all right? See right here, parentheses, it says, Dr. MacArthur sinfully calls Jesus' blood on the heavenly mercy seat bizarre. We'll see if we can, uh, if that will go. I don't want to listen to a whole sermon. Uh. We don't want to get caught into this bizarre notion that somehow in the actual fluid that came out of the body of Jesus, there is saving power or saving efficacy. And some people have done that, and they've actually gone so far as to say the blood that came out of his body was collected at the foot of the cross, put in vials, taken into heaven, and it's up there being poured out again and again on some heavenly mercy seat uh, to effect the salvation of sinners. This is an absolutely bizarre concept. Yeah, there's an element of that, isn't there, in the Roman Catholic view of transubstantiation. Yes, and, and the repetition of the Mass as if Jesus needs to shed his blood again and again and again and again because of some efficacy okay, in the blood. so he is taking something spiritual and trying to make it literal okay when we get 
baptized by the Holy Spirit, the blood is cleansing us. Okay, we're being washed, we're being put in robes of white, you know, our sins are being wiped clean. When God sees us, he does not see us in our sinful nature, he sees his son, Jesus Christ. All right, does that mean that while he was there, there were people collecting his blood and using that in a literal sense? No, it's all spiritual. And this guy just said he just doesn't understand that. He just does not understand that. So we'll read this article. It says, Dr. John MacArthur talks out of both sides of his mouth. While professing to believe in the sacrificial blood of Jesus, he also keeps saying that the bleeding itself is only symbolic of the blood, bloody, violent death of Christ. While Mr. MacArthur, the blood that, that Jesus shed on the cross was just as real as his death. Absolutely. When the death angel came over Egypt in Moses' day, the blood had, had to be applied to the doorpost on the home or else the firstborn died. Killing the lamb wasn't enough. The lamb's blood had to be applied. Exodus 12, 13, uh, let's, let's, which I believe they use KJV, but I just want to make sure um, on what they say. Get out our Bibles and let's fact check. It's just 12, 13 in the King James Bible says, uh, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Again, you can see the terminology right there. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Okay? You had to actually apply that blood. It's not just enough to be dipped in water, all right? The Catholics like to dip their babies in water, but that doesn't mean that when the baby grows up into adulthood and lives a life of sin and rejects Jesus Christ, that just because they were baptized as a baby, that they're good to go. You know, they can practice witchcraft. They can practice paganism. No, it's spiritual. And this guy, and the one that's using him as a source, doesn't understand this. John MacArthur is a heretic for diminishing the importance and necessity of the, of the literal shed and applied blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus had to apply his shed blood in heaven on the mercy seat, just as the Old Testament high priest had to apply the blood in the Holy of Holies. If Christ only died for our sins on the cross, then we have a dead lamb sacrificed without a high priest. Jesus had to resurrect from the dead as our high priest so that he could ascend into heaven and intercede on our behalf with the Father. Romans 8, 34, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, res yea rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Please don't fall for Mr. MacArthur's doctrinal lies, because without the literal fluid, liquid blood of Jesus to cleanse away our sins, we'd all go to the lake of fire for all eternity. The blood had to be shed and sprinkled on the heavenly mercy seat. Uh, Hebrews 9, 22 through 24, which, um, Hebrews, where are we at, Hebrews? That's right here. Let's see, 9, 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the pattern, patterns of things in the heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly body themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to, us, or now to appear in the presence of God for us. Also goes on to say uh, Hebrews 12, 24, which says... And to Jesus, the medi uh, mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Okay, remember, you had Cain and Abel. God accepted his sacrifice, did not accept Cain's, and Cain, in jealousy, murdered his brother. You know, they've got the restaurant, the fast food chain that says, Raising Cain's. 
all right? It's raising hell. You can't go into it. You cannot go into that because the, the, there's a spirit around even just putting a name like that as raising Cain that will poison you both with the, the, the GMO toxic food that will be harmful, harmful to the flesh, but the spiritual nature that will also cause harm to the spirit. Revelation 1.5, let's uh, go to Revelation 1.5, which says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the princes, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. Also see uh, 1 Peter 1.18 and 19, which says, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Okay, this guy is denying that. Let's go and listen to that again at what his statement said. We're going to go right there because it'll pick up right at the spot where he said it. Uh we don't want to get caught into this bizarre notion that somehow in the actual fluid that came out of the body of Jesus, there is saving power or saving efficacy. And some people have done that, and they've actually gone so far as to say the blood that came out of his body was collected at the foot of the cross, put in vials, taken into heaven, and it's up there being poured out again and again on some heavenly mercy seat uh, to affect the salvation of sinners. This is an absolutely bizarre concept. Yeah, there's an Again, that's bizarre. He is telling you he has rejected Jesus Christ, just as Mario has. Okay? You know, this, this, this morning, and I, I put this on Twitter because right when it happened, I happened to be uh, watching... Uh, I just happened to turn on the TV, and there was uh, Charles Stanley on there. And he said, we will be judged in heaven by what we do on the earth. And for about five minutes, he did not go and mention the name Jesus Christ. Okay, because if we don't first have Jesus Christ, all of that is not going to matter. All right? Only Jesus Christ saves. And people need to understand, Mario fans, Mario cult members need to understand that Mario does not provide salvation. By constantly rebuking, or constantly he calls himself Jesus Christ. And anybody that rebukes him that was close to him, that saw through his lies and rebuked him, he calls them Judases. They are his betrayers. This is absolutely disgusting. So, uh, the following article is being reprinted from the Plains Baptist Challenger of August 1986. After all these years, this information about John MacArthur's teaching is still needed today. His teaching on the blood of Christ is dangerous and people are still being led astray by it. There will be a follow-up article on this same subject, uh, subject and if there's enough demand we shall consider putting this information in a tract, uh, tract or booklet. And this is from Pastor E.L. Bynum which I don't know anything about. I'm not recommended them. You gotta use your own discretion. How does it line up with the Word of God? So far everything we have seen from his own words and from the argument against him has perfectly lined up with the true living word of God. In recent weeks, we have received material from two different sources concerning John MacArthur's teaching on the blood of Christ. After reading it over, I found his doctrine to be very disturbing. The April 1986 edition of the Faith for the Family, Faith Family, quotes him as saying in a 1976 article entitled, not his bleeding, but his dying. Quote, it was his death that was effectuous, not his blood. 
Christ did not bleed to death. The shedding of blood had nothing to do with bleeding. It simply means death. Nothing in his human blood saves. It is not his blood that I love. It is him. It is not his bleeding that saves me, but his dying. It is incredible to me that a Christian minister would make such statements. In not his bleeding but dying, MacArthur had this, uh, this to say. I um, may add a note that Revelation 1.5, again, uh, and from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the, of the earth, unto him that saith and washed us from the, our sins in his own blood. A passage which is confusing in the King James Version the word washed is not correct. The, the Greek word is delivered. See how they're doing this? How they get up these false Bibles? Oh, well, it's just mistranslated. It's just mistranslated. I've studied it. You haven't, so you've got to take my word for it. With that statement, I would like to take issue. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins into his own blood. What could possibly be confusing about that? He says that washed is incorrect and that it should be delivered. Unto him that loved us and delivered us from our sins in his own blood. Like most quote-unquote great scholars today, MacArthur suffers from the Westcott and Hort syndrome. Washed is in the Texas Recipus and so rendered by George Rickerberry in his innerliner Greek English New Testament. In his valuable footnotes, Barry reveals those responsible for trying to change the reading of this verse. The word was changed by Lockman, 1842 to 1850, uh, uh, Tischendorf, 8th edition, 1865 to 1872, blah, blah, blah. These are the three of the men that laid the groundwork for Westcott and Hort so that they could make the alarming changes in their revised version. The American Standard Version of 1901, of course, went along with the change, but they did put in a significant footnote. While rendering the word as loosed, their footnote says many authorities, some ancient, read washed. Do not agree with the changes found in the ASV when it reads, Unto him that loveth, loveth us, and loose us from the sins of his blood. Nor do I agree with the NIV as it reads, To him that loves us, and freed us from the sins of his blood. However, whether it is rendered washed, loose, freed, or delivered, it is still by or in his blood that this is done. While the ASV, the NASV, and the NIV definitely weakens the verse, neither of them will really let MacArthur up the hook. Whether washed from our sins or delivered from our sins is still only by the blood. In his commentary of Hebrews, pages 236-237, I found further alarming statements as he deals with Hebrews 9, 16-22. While he does say some good things, he is clearly talking in circles. When he says that blood is a symbol of the death, he sounds very much like the apostate Dr. Robert G. Bratcher, who translated the good news for modern man. This is what Bratcher believed, so he felt free to change blood to death. In Ephesians 1, Hebrews 10, and Revelation 1, 5, he changed blood to sacrifice. In 1 Peter 1, 19, he also managed to leave out blood or substitute another word. Or substituted another word in Matthew 27, 4, 24, 25, um, Acts 5, 28, 17, 26, 20, 28, Romans, you see all these scriptures before you, how many he twisted. Of course, Branchers' Good News Bible is one of the most corrupt translations of the 20th century. It would appear that in regard to the blood, at least, that MacArthur and Branchard are on the same wavelength. MacArthur states that it was not Jesus' physical blood that saves us, but his dying on our behalf, which is symbolized by the shedding of his physical blood. If we could be saved by blood without death, the animals would have bled, not killed, and it would have been the same with Jesus. I've never heard of anyone that teaches Jesus only needed to bleed a little to save us, and not to die. Numerous passages of Scripture tells us that Christ died for our sins. This is found in 1 Corinthians 15.3, as well as many other places. If anyone denies this, I would object very sternly to their denial. But my question is, why does it have to be his death or his blood? It is both his death and his blood that are important according to the Bible. How can MacArthur truthfully make the following statement? Again, however, we must need we need to keep in mind that the blood was a symbol. 
If Christ's own physical blood in itself does not cleanse from sin, how much less did the physical blood of animals? Emphasis ours. Many passages of Scripture reveal that he is dead wrong in his approach. What does the Scripture say? The elders were admonished to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Acts 20.28 20, Redemption and remission of sins cannot be apart from faith in his blood. Romans 3, 24 and 25. We are justified by his blood, Romans 5, 9, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, Ephesians 1, 7. We are made nigh by the blood of Christ, Ephesians 2, 13. We have redemption through his blood, Colossians 1, 14. And he made peace through the blood of his cross in Colossians 1, 20. In Hebrews, we are told... By his own blood we entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us, Hebrews 9.10. We are told without shedding of blood is no remission, Hebrews 9.22. We have boldness to enter in the holiness by the blood of Jesus in Hebrews 10.19. Jesus suffered without the camp that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, Hebrews 13.12. 13, John clear, told us clearly that the blood of Jesus Christ's Son cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Revelation 1, 5. They will sing of Christ, thou wast slain, and has redeemed us to God by the blood in Revelation 5, 9. Even though MacArthur believes that he is dispensed with Revelation 1, 5, we are previously discussed, as we previously discussed, he must still face Revelation 7, 14. I think you should find a little comfort there. Let's see. Let's read it. Um, Revelation 7.14 uh, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of Christ, in the blood of the Lamb. I think you should find a little comfort there. They sort of came out of the, grace, the, the, the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of Christ. Even the revised texts in their new version of spring, such as the NIV and the ASV, give MacArthur not one whit of aid and comfort. If the blood itself has no significance, then why do we have all of these scriptures? We'll finish with what Christ said about the blood, and I'll leave a link so you can check out the rest of this, because as you can see, um, this, well, we'll read what he says. We'll read what he says. We'll, we'll see what Jesus said, and then, uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Keep going past it. Uh, keep going past it. There we go. Arthur's belief cannot be reconciled with the words of my Savior when he said, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Matthew 26, 28. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. Luke 22, 20. These words were spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ as he instituted the Lord's Supper for his church. In all honesty, it would seem to me that MacArthur should eliminate the drink, quote, the fruit of the vine, from the Lord's Supper. He only needs the unleavened bread. Of course, if he were to do so, he would be in direct disobedience to the word of God. The children of Israel were told to slam the Passover lamb. They were to take the blood of the lamb and strike it upon the doorposts of their houses. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses which where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Exodus 12, 13. God did not tell them to hang the body of the lamb on the doorpost. The Garthus doctrine is in conflict with uh, Levit uh, Leviticus 17, 11, for the life of the blood is in the the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. It is perfectly clear that MacArthur minimizes the blood of Christ. I mean, that is a terrible thing for anyone to do. While he may not go as far as R.B. Thine Jr., he certainly is headed in the same direction. Bible believers need to mark such men and avoid them according to the scriptures. The teaching of MacArthur on this subject is very dangerous and he should be exposed. The clear and direct statements of the above scriptures prove, 
prove that John MacArthur is wrong in his teaching about the blood of Christ. He has departed from the general biblical teaching on this subject. No matter how popular he may be, we must believe the Bible and not MacArthur. We must believe the Bible and Jesus Christ and not Mario Brisson. Okay? Mario putting this up shows is a consent that he agrees with John MacArthur. I mean, that's just how dangerous this man is. So a few months ago, a pastor friend and I visited a MacArthur meeting in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I purchased a copy of MacArthur's commentary on Hebrews with the desire to see exactly what he says about the blood of Jesus Christ. This commentary was published in 1983 by Moody Press. Moody Bible Institute holds copyright. There can be no mistake about MacArthur's position that the blood itself does not save us, that the blood is symbolic of death. Words cannot be plainer. In the mere three pages of this book, MacArthur uses the term symbolic no less than 13 times. Blood is a symbol of death and therefore follows closely the idea of a tester's having to die in order for a will to become effective. It is possible to become morbid about Christ's sacrificial death and preoccupied with the suffering and shedding of blood. It is especially possible to become unbiblically preoccupied with the physical aspects of his death. It was not Jesus' physical blood that saves us, but his dying on our behalf, which is symbolized by the shedding of his physical blood. The purpose of the blood was to symbolize sacrifice for sin, which brought cleansing from sin. Therefore, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Again, however, we need to keep in mind that the blood was a symbol, and Christ's own physical blood in itself does not cleanse from sin, how much less the physical blood of animals. It is not surprising then that the Old Covenant allowed a symbol for a symbol. This exception, exception is clear proof that the Old Cleansing was symbolic, just as uh, animal blood symbolized Christ's true atoning blood, so that the epaw of flour symbolized in representing the animal blood. This non-blood offering for sin was acceptable because the oath sacrifice was entirely symbolic anyway. Yet this was the only exception, and even the exception represented a blood sacrifice. This, the basic symbol could not be changed because what it symbolized could not be changed. Since the penalty for sin is death, nothing but death symbolized by shedding of blood can atone for sin. The only way we can participate in the new covenant is through the atoning death of Jesus Christ, made effectual for us when we trust him as saving the Lord. John MacArthur, Hebrews, pages 236-238. Let's remind our readers that this book is still being published by Moody Press and is being sold on John MacArthur's ministry. Wow. It goes on and on and on about how wrong MacArthur has completely disqualified himself as a true Christian. Look at this. There's a whole lot of yeah. See how long this goes and how long this goes and how long this goes that this man does not believe in biblical truth. And yet today, this man told you that you must adhere to it. This is to manipulate his followers, to victimize his followers. Again, this has been going on for four years. For three years, we have rebuked his drug use, we have rebuked his drunkenness, and we've rebuked his lust. And, and damaging to women for two. His abuse towards women. Do you think this is the first time it's come out oh, that I have brought to your attention that Mario exposed himself to somebody that was trying to seek edification, seek help in Jesus' name? No. It's not. So for you to say we must forgive, you must repent so that we can forgive you. 
Because if you truly repent and you truly turn from your sins and we don't hear the nonsense that comes out of your mouth anymore, the arrogance, the pride, the blasphemy, then you will be forgiven. But you got to do that first. You got to do your own part, and still, instead of trying to command us to do your bidding, that is absolutely never going to happen. On the day of judgment, we do not have to answer to Mario Brisson because Mario Brisson is going to be just like the rest of us, having to answer for our own sins to Jesus Christ. When we stand before Him in judgment. If he casts us out, we're going to know why we, where we went wrong. Okay? Now, I'm going to go a little bit further. And we're going to read this garbage. This is why you need a hard copy King James Bible. They're trying to distract you with the world. George Bush Sr. secretly sponsored a child for 10 years. Well, the child that he fathered was a war criminal. All right, so I, I'm not I'm not following that garbage at all. All right, this is why it's important for us to speak up. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this row, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roe. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roe that I give thee. And did I eat it? And it was in my mouth as honey as sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely I had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Hard, hard heart, hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. Neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears, and go get thee to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and the noise of great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity of Telebib, uh, that dwelt by the river of Sheba, and I sat where they sat, and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word of my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn, yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thyself. Again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sins, and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thyself. 
And the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Rise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. This passage right here, Ezekiel 3, 16 through 21, has been my motivation for this channel. This has been why I do what I do and have done since October of 2012. Okay? If I see, if the, the, the Holy Spirit has opened my eyes and have given me understanding, it is not my own understanding, but what the Holy Spirit has given me. If I don't speak up, I am no better than they are. And that is how you have to be. In this, right here, Mario is giving more mind control to abuse his followers. There are people that look at this and say, you know what? He's right. I, we all make mistakes and everything. No. This has been going on for far too long. This is not, I sinned and I made a mistake. This is someone that is living in sin and does not want to depart from sin. All right? Mario is not a Christian. He is a pagan Satanist doing what pagan Satanists do, and that is make a mockery of Jesus Christ. All right? If the Lord has given you wisdom and understanding, you have a responsibility to use your voice, the voice that God gave you, to speak out, to warn others. You do not have a choice. Okay? It is a spiritual warfare. Do you know what those who sit idly by what happened to those when Lucifer rebelled? The angels in heaven that just said, well, I'll see what happens and everything. They got cast out. They got cast out. And if you just keep your mouth shut, knowing what he's doing is wrong, saying, well, you know, this guy is, is preying on children. He's really sexual. He's a pervert. He's a drug addict. I know this. I, and lots of people know this, but he has good intentions in his heart. I'll just let him alone. He'll eventually get better. No. No. The time is now. This channel needs to come down so that it cannot harm another soul. And you need to pick up your cross and fight for Jesus Christ. Okay? It's a spiritual warfare that each and every one of us has to fight on a daily basis. If you are truly born again through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the third day, and you know that Christ, through his blood shed, saved us and washed us from our sins, you should see something like this and say, enough is enough. Okay? We've rebuked Mario on his homosexuality. We've rebuked him on his drunkenness. We've rebuked him on his drug use. And we've rebuked him on his abuse towards women, children, and I guess now because of the granny, the elderly. His entire audience is victimized by his words. And you cannot sit on the sidelines and allow this to happen anymore. If this man permits this to go on, we will keep going on because he needs to be removed from his self-appointed post. All right, enough is enough of this. All right? It can have it's happened before. And it will happen again. Mario isn't the first false teacher. He'll be the, he won't be the last. 
but this is your time to speak up and end his reign of manipulation. Spiritual terror on true Christians. This shows he does not get it. And he most likely never will. He showed his friends ding-dongs and still thinks you're the bad guy for not believing him. This ends. Mario, get off YouTube and get in your Bible. To anyone still listening to Mario, get off YouTube and get in your Bible, your hard copy King James Bible. It's not like they're hard to find. You can find them at Dollar Tree. You can get them at Walmart. Staying in the Word of God daily and staying in prayer daily is how you defeat Satan and his demons through Jesus Christ. It is time for you to put on the armor of God and truly fight for Jesus Christ before you get left behind and you get rejected yourself because your silence makes you just as guilty as Mario.